matter who's carrying the standard. But it's the issues. If we can get, we can come around with issues. Now, what more issue? What issue is more important than the Supreme Court appointments? That's like a top flight thing. So all of you guys who really believe that people ought to be able to marry who they want to, that the Supreme Court ought to make, ought to let the electorate decide who's going to be president, and I'll get into that a little bit more. All of you who believe those things really need to put on your organizing and door knocking shoes. Not because of whose name might be on the ballot, but because of the issue, because of who's going to make the Supreme Court appointment. It is a core organizing grassroots mobilization issue. It is an issue that'll make you get up in the morning and knock doors until late at night. It's an issue that'll make you wear out your knuckles. It's an issue that ought to make you visit every hair shop and coffee shop in the district you live in. Because this is a very big deal. And I'm so pleased we got Jeff Merkley, who is going to be making a decision. He's going to be actually voting on this, who's ever going to be confirmed. And I think it'd be better to have him in the majority when that decision is made. What do y'all think? Yeah. Yeah. That from an activist standpoint, the Supreme Court seems kind of lawyerly and over there. I happen to live the dual life of a lawyer and an activist, so I can relate to, to both. And I just want to say that it's important for us activists to understand how many everyday bread and butter quality of life issues that the Supreme Court really does weigh in on. I mean, just think about Lily Ledbetter. Here's a lady in Alabama. Busting chops, 30 years straight. Training men, training them, they're coming in and they're coming out, and she's, some of them end up supervising her even though she brought them in and got better work reviews than they got. And at the 30, end of 30 years, she applied for her pension, found out that her pension was light. And that male counterparts who've been there a shorter time than her had a bigger pension than she did. She sued, she won with a jury, men and women, and she got her money, but then, the other side appealed, and they didn't appeal saying, oh, we didn't discriminate against her. They said, yeah, we kind of we kind of discriminated against her, but she didn't sue fast enough. And it chopped her money, which is not just a legal miscarriage, but is a moral uh, failure. Took it all the way up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, yeah, she didn't sue fast enough. The fact that she didn't know she was being discriminated against didn't matter to them. The fact that she, in fact, had been discriminated against didn't matter to them. They just wanted to side with the big business who didn't want to pay her. Supreme Court. Well, what about Harris versus Quinn? You want to join a public employee union? Oh, yeah. I don't want to be part of the union, but when you guys negotiate an awesome contract, I definitely want part of that money. Oh no, you want to be a free rider and a free loader and not pay anything? That case was working its way towards decision when Justice Scalia passed away. And I don't know too many unions that weren't real worried about the outcome of that decision. And you know how it is. If somebody tells you that you, some of your bills are optional, you don't have to be anti-union. You'll be like, hey man, I'd like to, but this month I ain't got it. But if that happens, you and I both know public employee unions will suffer, people will suffer, safety will suffer, and we will, as a nation, will suffer. Harris versus Quinn. Or what about Hudson versus Michigan? The Roberts Court just held that if police break the rules around the Fourth Amendment, such as failing to knock and announce prior to entering, there will be no significant sanctions or punishments for the violation against our protections against search and seizure. We live in the era of Philando Castile, Alton Sterling. We live in the era where if you don't have proper restrictions on police practices, bad things will happen to happen even if you do have some. So we're going to kick the door open even more? This is an invitation to lawlessness. And so I just want to say, and my main message today is thank you for having this, because I do believe that as activists who are online and on the ground, we have got to be very plugged into what happens on the Supreme Court. 
and we have got to absolutely demand right now that the Senate Republicans do their job so they will either do their job or be exposed for failing to do their job. So you guys ready to go get after them a little bit? Yeah.